Hey there, Matt from snowtrek.org here. Today I wanted to show you guys how you can use an ideal tire groover to sipe your tires. So uh, let's get a closer look at this thing. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this alright. This is the uh, ideal tire groover and in this arrangement the blade is set up for grooving a tire. Um, you can see if you were to run that through uh, the lug of a tire it's actually going to scoop out a chunk of uh, rubber and that's not what we want to do. So what you can do is you can go ahead and take the blade out, flip it upside down, <clears throat> bear with me for a second here, still got the screw loose so and if we flip it upside down now we can just run this right through the lugs of the tires and it's just going to put a couple of slits in each in each lug and that's what we call siping so let me uh, plug this thing in and get it heated up and show you how it works okay so these uh, tire groovers they get really stinking hot so you want to make sure uh, you got that sitting somewhere where it's not gonna catch your Bronco on fire <laughs> so yeah anyway uh, what I've got here is my spare tire that I had purchased used and um, the original owner he had this thing siped uh, from a machine and you can usually get that done for like 10 or 15 bucks a tire and it you know they just put it on a machine and it goes through and cuts uh, slits in each tire or, you know in the lugs here uh, the one thing to watch out for is a lot of guys um, they don't know how to run the tire machine very well so the blades are dull or it's the wrong size blade or they're not putting enough lube on or they're not putting enough pressure on it so it's not cutting deep enough you know and then the other thing is you know as, as they the, the cutting head goes around they got to turn a crank you know and crank it over crank it over again and what happens sometimes is you start getting a, some overlap and you can see a little bit of that here this tire is actually done pretty well um, but in extreme cases you get way too much overlap and it really can chew your tire up so that's uh, that's one advantage of doing it yourself is you got a lot more control over that and I am uh, I'm not one of the people that believes in just doing the, the center lugs of a tire I always do the outer lugs I never really had a problem so that's what I'm gonna do today is go ahead and finish siping the outer lugs of this tire um, and just so you guys can see when I uh, go shopping for tires siping is what I'm looking for so this is on my car um, I don't even remember what the heck these things were these happen to be Pirelli's and you can see a lot of factory siping there so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any additional siping done to these because that, you know, I went, I went looking for a tire that already had a lot of siping because it makes a big difference. And here's some Michelin's on the, uh, on the Explorer, and again, you're going to see a lot of siping. Uh, this is one of my super swampers that I had siped a couple of years ago and it's I have haven't rotated my tires so um, it's been on the front the whole time so these sipes really haven't uh, started to open up too much yet but I've had a lot of wheeling and you know it's it's fine no problems chunking or anything like that and you can see uh, you know I've, I've siped the outer lugs and just don't really have an issue with it. So 
you can actually feel the difference um, with your hand on a tire that's been siped versus a tire that hasn't been. So like on these outer lugs here, my hand just slides right across, you know, smooth. And then, you know, where they're siping here, you can actually, it, it rips your hand. It, it's night and day difference when, you're, when, when it's wet, when it's icy. Even when you're up in the deep snow, you know, as you're driving across the snow, it's packing, you know, it's packing it right under your tire. And, you know, all those little sipes, you're going to get a lot of traction off of that. So, uh, yeah, strongly suggest doing it. Okay, so let's see if this uh, thing is heated up enough to do some cutting. Feels pretty warm. So it's a time-consuming process. Um, I'm just doing two cuts on uh, each outer lug here, and it actually will start cutting a little easier as it gets hotter. But it's it's good enough for now. And what I'm doing is I'm just stopping you know, a quarter inch or so from, from the edge of the lug. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little closer look here. Yeah, cutting a little easier now. Um, one thing you should watch out for, sometimes uh, the ends of the blades, they they start to bend inward too much, so you're you're getting kind of a triangular shaped cut, and you don't really want that. Uh, you know, so you might have to stop every once in a while and and tweak the blade. You know, so just keep an eye on that. Yeah, cutting up quite a bit easier now. screwdriver here. Hopefully you can see this, but uh, got some nice good cuts in here. And as you drive on it, these will start opening up a little bit. So hopefully you see that. All right. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish typing this tire. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it helped you out. Uh, if it did, give me a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down, whatever. Um, stop by, check out the website, snowtrek.org. Uh, I've got some other articles on there that you might be interested in. And thanks for watching.